Hello, students. My name is Dr. N. Mason Conklin, and I'm uh, kind of the Canvas admin for Reinhardt University, and mostly that's so that I can train people how to use the system and uh, some changes that are coming. Now, I wanted to alert you that there are some major changes coming to the rich content editor, and that's where you compose material in Canvas. And these changes are coming on Saturday, and I wanted to preview them with you. Most of the time, you're encountering the rich content editor when you are creating posts in a discussion board. So what you're used to seeing is something like this. Whenever you have a discussion board, um, you've got two rows of icons, and you type here, and when you're done, you hit post reply. Um, so what you're going to see now, and I'll use a discussion board as an example, is now this. Okay, it's a little bit different. We have a menu bar and an icon toolbar. Uh, and so all of the functionality that we've had in the old rich content editor, we have in the new enhanced rich content editor. It's just in a little bit different space. And really, it's quite intuitive, and it's going to make your life easier in some major ways. So let me uh, show you what it's all about. Okay, I've pasted some information into my window, and I just want to show you really quickly um, how to format text using this new Enhanced Rich Content Editor. And like I said, it's very intuitive. If you wanted to change the size of text, you can do that right here. And it makes sense. This says 12 point. Let's make it 24 point. And now it's bigger. I don't like that. I'm going to go back to 12 point. Uh, if you've been using headings in your posts, and I do hope you have, headings really help you organize your thought. This might be a heading one intro, and this might be a heading two supporting point, something like that. So I go into this heading one, and instead of it being paragraph, heading two is as high as you can go. Heading one happens to be the title of the um, discussion board, but you get the point. This is the biggest level heading, and the heading two would be actually heading three. Oh, I did that wrong. Hit enter there, and then heading three. Okay, actually, let me just change that to a two and change that to a three, and now we are all good. All right, so uh, your document styles are here next to the point size. Uh, of course, you can bold with the bold button. You can italicize with the italicize button. You can underline with the underline button. You can change the color of your font right here. If you want it to be green, now it's green. I don't recommend it, but it's possible. You can even change the background. It's kind of it looks like a highlighter because that's kind of what you can do with it. If you change the background to a yellow, now it looks like you've highlighted it. Um, you can make certain letters superscript like that. That can be handy if you're adding, a, say, a footnote or if you need to do it for some other reason. There's also the option to subscript. I don't do that very often, but it's possible. Um, you can add a link to specific words. So if you wanted to do study tools, uh, click the link. I need to go find what I want. Study tools. Okay. I'll copy that URL and put it in there. And now study tools is a link that I can follow. Um, that's handy. Now, here's one of the big improvements. If you've ever had to post an image to a discussion forum, you know it was a hassle. To do it, you have to first upload it to your course files and then add an image from your course files. But now you can upload a, an image directly. So let's say I wanted to uh, add something from my computer. I can either drag and drop directly in there, boom, like that, and describe the image, Happy dude with a beard. And submit it, and it's brought right into the page. Much simpler. You can click on it and drag the handles to resize it. It's just a lot easier. You can still record yourself uh, into a discussion 
Um, you are limited somewhat to the length of that video that you can record right there in the browser. You can, of course, upload media that you've already recorded. Again, I think you are limited to length. Um, documents. Maybe you need to add a document. You want to share a document in a uh, discussion post. You can do that here with the document button. Again, you can just grab the document, drag it in there, and then upload it. Or you can click into this window, and that will take you to a browser, and you can uh, then um, bring that in. And it will be pasted right there in your post and people can click on it and download or hit the preview icon and see that document. Very handy. Now, one of the things that to me was immediately missing because I use this option a lot. We have this YouTube and Vimeo button available in the old rich content editor. It seems to be missing, right? Well, it's not. It's actually hidden here in this uh, electrical plug. It's called the apps icon. You can think of it as plugins. Uh, and I can still access my YouTube plugin or my some other plugins. If I hit view all, maybe I wanted to add a Vimeo video. All I would have to do is click right here in the title of the app and it brings it in for me. And in fact, the next time I go to use apps, Vimeo is one of the options. Okay. Uh, this is uh, left align, right align, and center. Those are the options there. We have bullet points. Point one, point two, point three, point three A, point three B, point four. So I can take all of those and just create regular old bullets. Now you see that I have this 3A and 3B. I can indent with this next button so that it kicks it out a level in my outline. Um, let's say I made a mistake, I can undent, bring it back. Not only that, I've got a bunch of different um, bullet types. I could do bullet numbers and this makes them a numbered list. I like this because uh, if I'm making a list and I want to insert something somewhere else, you see it renumbers everything, and it even renumbers it if you decide to indent things. So I still just have one, two, three, four main points, and then the sub points are numbered within it. Very, very handy. I'm going to go back to bullets. Uh, so now there are some other icons that we're not seeing right now, but you do see these three dots. These three dots are the icons that you can't see. If I were to expand just a little bit, there they are. This is the remove forwarding, formatting button. If I do this, those, well, let me, let's say I don't like any of these changes I made up here. I can remove the formatting with this button. Boom. And now the bold is gone. The underline is gone. The italics is gone. The highlights gone. The green text is gone. Only thing that remains is that link. It's a good button to know about. I can also insert a table. It lets me draw the size of it. Uh, that can be handy. There is a math editor. I don't know how to use it, but it's available. And if you need to learn how to use it, you can learn how to use it from your professor that asks you to use it, not me. Uh, then there is an embed icon. So you can use that to share embed codes that you might get from YouTube or embed codes you might get from Instagram, if you can do that or uh, other apps and you can embed it right in your page. Very handy. Now, so far, so good. You say you didn't talk about any of this. You're right. Um, because a lot of what you can do with these, you can do with the buttons too. So like this format menu item, just kind of another way to get to all the things you, you want to do. There's also this code, which is kind of nice. Um, let me select some text and make it code. If you're working in a science, uh, in a computer science course, that can just, it, it makes it uh, look like code. I don't know. Uh, other formatting options. Again, all of this is stuff that you can do with, oh, there's some new fonts. That's nice. Font sizes. 
align, directionality, text color, background color, clear formatting. All that is stuff you can do with the menu, with the toolbar anyway. But there is one tool I think you're really going to like. In fact, I know you're going to like it. If you look at this right here, this tools, guess what it's got inside of it? Word count. And it will count your words for you in your post. I know that can be important to you. So word count is going to be located in tools. Another thing I think you're really going to like, um, I think this is a great addition. This view, full screen. Ah, now you got plenty of real estate to write your post. Um, it's just, it's great. I love it. Uh, you're not limited to just a little teeny tiny area of the window you have open. You get the whole uh, real estate of the area you have, op of your browser you have open. Okay, to get out of that, you can just simply go back to view and hit full screen again. So these are some of the changes that are coming to the rich content editor. It's very intuitive. I don't think it's going to be a big deal um, making this change over and you get some new tools. So how about that? It's pretty great, huh? So that is a preview of the enhanced rich content editor. Uh, in the email where I send out this video, I'll also include a link to the articles about the enhanced rich content editor from the student guide for Canvas. So if you want to read more about it, you can uh, with the link to those articles. All right. Have a great semester. Write some fabulous discussion posts with the new Enhance Rich Content Editor. Bye-bye.